Well, Sir Alan Rudge um, from the ERA Foundation, you've spoken at the National Manufacturing Debate today. Your presentation was called, Does Manufacturing Matter? Uh, one of the things that you drew out in that presentation was that some of the exemplars, um, governments, journalists, and the public um, call upon to say, yes, manufacturing matters, uh, well-known and successful companies such as Arm and Rolls-Royce, but it's the SMEs that need financing and need a bit more support who are actually the, the foundation of the manufacturing sector. Can you expand on that point? Yes, I think we have uh, problems at both ends of the scale. The truth is it isn't the case that we, uh, we don't have good examples, as you've mentioned some, but um, if you take the total capacity of the UK in terms of an industrial nation, we have allowed it to um, not grow with the nation, yeah. put it that way. And we now have a significant trade gap, particularly in manufacturers. Significant trade gap, a serious one. The only way we're going to close that is by increasing the scale. If you look at how to increase the scale, 50% of our manufacturing capability comes from the small and medium-sized sector. But we've been seriously underfunding it, underinvesting in it, and making finance difficult for them, they're not going to grow under those conditions. And if we don't make some changes, then we're not going to see the kind of growth we need. The trend is down, not up. Another important cause that uh, the ERA Foundation champions uh, is the recognition of the um, perhaps flawed uh, UK energy policy. Um, it seems to be that the government is very keen to tax carbon emissions uh, and while certain uh, parts of the, the UK demographic might say that's a good thing to do to, um, to, 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 to move to a more um, ca carbon re reduced energy mix, um, you, you would argue perhaps that it's actually decarbonizing through deindustrialization. De Essentially that, that's the case. If you look at um, the, the extent to which we contribute to the global uh, carbon dioxide uh, uh, emissions, it's less than 2% as a nation. So if we all committed suicide tomorrow to do the honourable thing, it would make no difference to the world because within six months the growth in India and China would exceed our total mm. output. So first of all, it's a futile gesture. And secondly, by doing it, you are heavily taxing in energy and electricity supply and therefore your energy intensive industries are going to really suffer. At the other end of the scale, so are the poor folk, by the way. The, yes. They're also going to suffer with rising energy costs. So we're putting ourselves to a lot of pain. We're damaging our industry to achieve absolutely nothing, even if you are worried about the environment and CO2. Mm. I think the, the, the figure that stands out for me on that last comment was, was 2%. That's the UK contribution to global carbon, uh, carbon emissions. Um, given that very stark figure, um, even though you might say it's meritorious to endeavour to reduce carbon emissions through taxation on one side of the argument. H how has government responded to that, that stark statistic when the ERA, ERA Foundation and the EEF CBI have, have, have put it to them? Well, that is the question and um, <laughs> uh, we have uh, and are attempting to make the point, in fact I've, uh, with some colleagues have written to uh, Vince Cable to make the point uh, uh, rather stronger. But we are concerned about it, and it does seem that um, the, the climate change issue has become almost religious so that nobody looks at the facts anymore. And the truth of the matter is, an impoverished Britain would do nothing for the environment and nothing for future generations. It must be, you must be a relatively wealthy nation to even afford to do the science, let alone to actually uh, do some engineering which uh, benefits the environment. So it becomes nonsensical. And we seem to have been caught up in this nonsensical spiral for a while. Um, and final question, perhaps. Um, your presentation also touched on the skills gap. Um, what, what kind of uh, conclusions has your organisation um, uh, discovered in terms of the size of the problem in closing the skills gap? Well, what, what, we did, what we did, in fact, we looked at the whole environment and we said, if you really want to encourage manufacture or increase manufacture in the UK, you've got to look at the total environment that they operate in with regard to both investment and operations. Mm. And when you look at that, we produced a list of 31 parameters, which we said governments should start from the top and work down to see if they can optimize, to the degree they can, um, this parameter towards manufacturing and, and productivity, if you like. And uh, about the third or fourth on the list was um, uh, skills, and it was particularly technician skills rather than professional skills. Professional skills were there, but further down the list. And there is a, a, a definite shortage of uh, technical skills.
and that, that that message is getting through, do you think? Uh, I, I, well, I mean, there is the apprenticeship um, initiative, which is, is one element. Um, whether the scale, this is what bothers me generally about mm. uh, government reaction, government seems to have accepted the message that um, manufacturing matters and they've got to do something about it if they're going to balance up the economy. Um, that seems to be uh, uh, fine. Um, they are, of course, heavily limited by the fact that the cupboard is bare in terms of having any money to do much. Right. And therefore, if they give to Peter, they've got to take away from Paul, and I think that's their big problem. But nevertheless, the scale of what is necessary if you're going to change this trend is large. Mm. And what I'm not confident about at the moment is the kind of changes that are being implemented are of the right scale to actually change the trend. Mm. And if you look at the numbers over the last decade, the trend is definitely down. And we really have to make some significant changes to create an environment where manufacturing flourishes. There's really a lot of work to do in a concerted way. There is a lot of work to do, and it isn't one parameter. You can't just change one parameter and expect it to all become right. Mm. You, any, anybody managing a company, going into a company that was in the state of UK Limited, would look at, the, look at the situation and say, these trends are dreadful, I have got to implement some serious changes because otherwise next year will only be like this year. Mm. And at the moment there is a slight upturn in our manufacturing capability, but the general prognosis is it's unlikely to carry on to be sustained. unless we do something to change the environment that they operate in. Quite, quite radically, yeah. yeah. Well, Sir Alan Rudge, Chairman of the ERA Foundation, thank you very much. Thank you.